Hi. Hi and welcome. Welcome to the Arts Council of Surrey Community Gallery here at the Newton Cultural Centre. My name is Wendy Mould. I am the producer of Gallery Talks. I'm here today to introduce you to the winners of the Paint the Train Juried Art Show. The show is presented by the Arts Council of Surrey in partnership with the Langley Arts Council and the Paint the Train, sorry, and the Fraser Valley Heritage Railway. The show is here until November 25th and it can be viewed online here at the gallery or you can see it at the Arts Council of Surrey.ca. So to, let's go meet the winners. Well, congratulations, Elaine. It's really exciting to see your picture and a first place award for the uh, 2D painting and drawings. Thank you so very much, yeah. Wendy. So tell us about Interurban. How did you uh, come up with that idea for the picture? Well, years ago, we, um, as a family, would go, always go to the Fraser Valley Heritage um, Museum site down in Cloverdale, and we'd frequent that there with our family members. And I, I'd always have my camera in, in hand and take pictures. And I remember this particular picture taken about six years ago, uh, right in front of the station house with the, the train, the interurban, the 1225, uh, uh, sitting there. And um, it, it just popped into my mind what, as soon as this uh, in, interview or the, the competition uh, was uh, oh. put out there for a call. Yes. Yeah. It's funny how those pictures yeah. stay embedded in your mind, isn't it? No, exactly. Yeah. So, could you tell us just a little bit about your process for this? So, with the process, I use a grid. I, I basically grid out the entire picture, um, and then what I do is I uh, do a rudimentary drawing of it so that I can get the proper angles through the picture. As you can see, there's a lot of angles. Uh, that need to be um, mapped out before you ever start it. And then after I get the grid, then I have the basis, and then I continue drawing on the canvas because all my good memory, uh, good thoughts come off onto the canvas. I can't draw um, straight to a pad and then transpose it uh, just because of all that energy and excitement I get into as soon as I, I start doing an art piece. Oh, neat, very neat. Well, once again, congratulations on your award, Thank and you I look much. forward to seeing uh, some of your work in some of the future shows. Thank you so much, Wendy. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> well, congratulations, Bob. It's nice to see your work again. I know you were here in the gallery a couple months ago with the show. Yep. And now you're an award winner, second place, with your picture passing the Mufford Barn. Tell us about this. What period is it in? And well, I tried to, to place it uh, in the 1940s, uh, because by the 1950s, uh, the, the operation of the BC Electric Railroad had pretty much shut down. Uh, what I went for was to find somewhere along the route of the original train uh, that had something interesting behind it, because I didn't want to do just the train cars. So I, uh, we, my wife and I were out driving. We, we kind of traced the route uh, as it traveled from what was then called Langley Prairie. It's now the town of Langley, but way down at Glover Road and Fraser Highway was the uh, location of, the, of that town's uh, train station. But there's nothing left there. So we just got on Glover Road and started to head out to Fort, Fort Langley and came across this. Now originally, I was looking at something a little further up the road, which is a really interesting set of silos. And I stopped into the barn to talk to the fellow who was operating it to find out the age of the silos. And he said, no, 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 those things are only out of the 60s or 70s. But he said, this barn was built in 1906. And it was here. And in fact, it was part of uh, one of the processes of the BC Electric Railroad, which was to take the uh, milk from all the farms in the immediate community and deliver it back to New Westminster. Just in behind this car, there's a little building that's called the Milk Barn, right beside the tracks. Uh, when the trains would go to Chilliwack and then come back, they would stop at the Milk Barn, pick the milk up, and it was taken on into New Westminster to be processed. Uh, the Milk Barn, unfortunately, is a pretty small little building, and there wasn't a way of doing it in the painting. But the barn itself has been there and part of that property and that operation for over a hundred years. 
So I said, aha, I think I found the piece that I want to paint. The young fellow there was just a, a, a great wealth of information uh, about the immediate area. All of the land that's in behind this barn and on the other side of the road in Milner was originally part of uh, the Hudson Bay Company's land grant. And it was the agricultural land that they were given in order to be able to feed the fort. Oh, so yeah. all of this property here uh, was farmed out, literally, uh, to farmers to raise agricultural products to feed the fort. And as, as part of that, of course, uh, there were dairy farms. Now eventually, once the fort was, was not really an operational military facility, all of this farmland became independently owned, and that's when they had to find another place to process the milk. So everything went into New Westminster, and this barn was the center of getting that milk uh, into uh, uh, a processor. Neat, neat. So thank you very much, and again, congratulations on your award, and I'm sure we'll see some more of your pictures here in the future. I hope so. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. Well, hi Carla, you're back again. I always remember interviewing you for your show here a couple of months ago. And I see now you're a prize winner for the Paint the Train. Congratulations. And your picture, early morning arrival at Sullivan Station. Tell us about it. How did you get such a great shot for reference? Okay, I particularly wanted to capture the train in a more a rural, um, area so I, I thought about where I would like to have to actually get a picture of the train so um, I scouted out along the tracks uh, an area that to me reflected the more farming and agricultural history of the Cloverdale area so this is the area I picked it's um, close to Sullivan Station Sullivan Station is just right here but um, in the background you don't have the uh, of development that sort of is along the tracks now um, as the Cloverdale um, area is one of the third, I think it's number three, rapidly growing areas in Canada right now. So I kind of wanted to people, when they look at this painting, to also sort of get nostalgic, nostalgic about it because and look and sort of remember what it was like in the past to take this train. Um, I, I teach an art group of uh, seniors and they quite often would tell me stories about the train and how they would take it uh, in Vancouver back in the, the days uh, to go visit their girlfriends or <laughs> their friends out in the valley. So. Well, wow, that is really neat, and yes, I, I'm sure people don't realize as artists how much we have to kind of sneak around and try and get the shot that we need for mm -hmm. reference, and you certainly did capture that sense of ruralness that would have been there when that train was originally running. Well, thank you very much, and once again, congratulations on your award. We'll look forward to seeing your work in the future. Thank you, Wendy. Oh. <laughs> Well, it's pretty exciting to meet you, Jenny. I am uh, really looking forward to hearing about your picture. And I also wanted to congratulate you on your honorable mention for uh, the paint the show, um, paint the train show. So Jenny, can you give us some idea? Like, where did you come up with this great idea for a picture? Well, um, like, uh, you know, I, I was a new member uh, uh, with the Surrey Art Gallery uh, this year, like introduced by, because um, I'm from Burnaby Artist Guild by uh, another member from Burnaby Arts Guild, Roxanne. Mm -hmm. So um, when the first time I got your magazine Spotlight, I read the magazine said there's like entry uh, call, like a paint the train. So, um, you know, like by that time, like I don't have quite experience to paint a train. So I asked my husband, we went to the Fort Lenny, the train CN station. And um, we saw that there's like the big red train just uh, set there. And it was like introduction, like a plaque said like, this CN train like service on duty like since 1915. 
now it's already 2021. You know, like there's uh, so many years that happened, so many things happened like, in between. So um, for me, I took like a picture from this rent train from different angle. I thought, oh, how can I answer this like this call, the artist call? And how can I make connection since there are so many years past? So um, I saw the uh, station there, there's lots of visitors. That's kind of like um, give me connection and idea. Like you, you could see uh, I paint lots of people just like um, mm -hmm. inside the train. Yeah. Actually, you know, they're, they're kind of like a, quite a, like a like little bit like distance between the station and also the, the red train. So um, you could tell like I, I use the color, I, I use the ink. I put lots of detail for the train because it's still on duty. Even the content is different. It's no longer serving as like for delivery or shipment, but rather it's like heritage side. It's for education and also like for carrying the heritage and then pass down to the next generation. I said, okay, that's the inspiration. That's like put me to paint. Wow. Well, it's really good. I, I was uh, quite pleased to, when I saw your picture and, and uh, I de definitely like your idea of bringing those people in and, and just giving us a sense of they're in the past, you know, very neat. Well, once again, I want to congratulate you on your award and I'll look forward to seeing some of your pictures in future jury shows. Yeah, thank you. Oh, I, I want to add a little bit like, um, I know like, you know, uh, since the 1915, like the, this train is like on duty, but today, you know, like the passengers and the people waiting in the side, they are changing. The train is like sit there, like, you know, like still the same, but passengers, the visitors, I didn't give them like identity because they are the travelers. So I, I just like put like, look like a silly white. It's like empty. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you. Well, this is a surprise, eh? I get to interview myself. Yes, I am one of the winners, winners in the Paint the Train uh, jury show. I won first place. Can you imagine? Yay! Anyway, uh, my entry was book art. Now, this is something that I started doing uh, during COVID, and I learned about the book art, and I kind of got interested in it. And when the Paint the Train uh, jury show uh, average call went out, I started looking, I thought, well, that might be something I could do. And I went to the Surrey archives and I began to uh, look at things and look at some of the pictures that were there. And um, I saw this picture here of Curly, the logging train in 1894. And it really caught my eye and I decided, whoa, this is what I'm going to use. And so, from there, I ended up at the Historical Society website and other places, reading memories, and I found some neat pictures in that time period. Stewart Farm became another one of my pictures that I used because I wanted to talk about agriculture. And from agriculture, I found this great picture of James Oxham, Oxenhammer, Ham, who had the Surrey General Store in 1910. And so I got some good pictures of him, and I did a shopkeeper to be in there. And then I finished it off with the Cloverdale train station in 1910. Because who knew there was the electric train went all the way from Vancouver to Chilliwack in 1910. I think that's so neat. So again, thank you to uh, the uh, hosts for this show, and I'm really excited to be one of the prize winners. Well, hello, Art. It's really nice to meet you, and I'd like to congratulate you on your award for second place uh, and your on your model of the BCER trains. You did the 1225 and the 1701. Can you tell us a little bit about these cars, how they're made, and what your purpose was for them? Well, we decided to make a bunch of trains for, for a souvenir shop when our season starts and 
I decided to take a couple and make paint them all up for going to the paint the train. So I decided to paint it and what took me a long time, but it worked out really good. Let's see that you were showing me the car that you have that's just the wood. What did it look like before it's painted? Oh my goodness. Yes, you did a lot of work in painting that. Yeah. All that was paint all painted block. Oh, wow. Wheels move and everything. Wow. Yeah. Very nice. And so now, how does your group use these cards? What are they going to be doing with them? Uh, say, sell them in our, our souvenir shop and in the Cloverdale station. I see. And when uh, our season starts. Oh, yes. Oh. So, Oh, that's really neat. So they're all handmade and then you're selling them in the shop and sort of a fundraiser, yeah. I guess, too, for your shop. Pretty much, yeah. And for the organization as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's really neat. Well, thank you very much, Art. It's really nice to meet you and to learn a little bit more about your uh, trains. As I say, I was very impressed when I saw your model in, in the show. Thank you very much. Hi, Patty. Well, you've won an award. Third place in the Mixed Media, Printmaking, Sculptures, and Fiber Arts category. It's kind of neat. I, I know I have uh, talked to you before about one of your winning pieces, and I'm happy to hear more about it today. So this is Knitting Across the Rails. So knitting. Tell us about your knitting. Oh, I started at about age five when mom taught me and I've been fiddling with it ever since. I was originally making other blankets and talking at the office and that about trains and I thought, hmm. And all of a sudden I put the other knitting down and started fiddling with this and proceeded to make the six different panels and then sewed them all together. And I just, it just kind of came from, can I do it? <laughs> Just personal challenges. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm always having personal challenges myself, so yeah. I know what you mean. So you designed your own trains too, then I presume. Uh, actually, it started from a dishcloth that I had seen, and I just kind of went from there. Oh, and took it, yeah. took it yeah. the next way. Oh, neat, neat. I have a tendency to do that. I never go with what exactly is going to happen. I kind of wave off in my own direction. Yes, yes, I certainly understand that. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. How long did something like this take for you? Um, it probably took about 15 hours oh. in total. It's, yeah, I would say it would be about that. Well, do you like it. watch TV when you're knitting? Or? Usually, or the radio, or you know, I'm just sitting in the car waiting for somebody. Right. I, I don't just sit down and work. Right. And then there's other days where I will probably work about a 12 hour day. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I think I've been sitting too long. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think that's like all of us. We mm. get into our projects and we lose sense of time. Yes. Well, nice to see you and talk with you about your piece. And again, congratulations. Thank you very much. I was oh, very excited. Okay. Well, congratulations, Melissa. It's really nice to meet and talk with you. I've seen your art quite a bit on the uh, Arts Council uh, website. And so it's exciting to meet you in person and to congratulate you for your honorable mention for your picture, Meet Me at the Philosophy. Yes. Tell us about it. How did you put this together? Uh, thanks. I put this together with watercolor and something called paper toll, which is really just little watercolor pieces that are cut out separately and attached with a spacer in between to give it a more three-dimensional pop-up kind of look, which is really, really interesting in person. And I almost didn't even submit this because I definitely stretched and pulled the theme toward my like comfort zone and plants and animals. Oh yes, yes. Um, but I was completely charmed by the Velocipede, which is a small railway vehicle that you can fit one person on. And I set it inside of a meadow to, as a nod to the Bee Garden Project started by the Honeybee Center. So they are reclaiming uh, small sections of unused property along the railway to plant wildflowers in to better serve our local pollinating insects. 
Oh, well, that's really nice to me. Yeah, I must admit, I was uh, intrigued with your being a water hellenist. I, I like your process, and uh, I certainly didn't understand your title at all, but now exactly. I can see what you're talking about, and uh, great. Well, thank you very much. And again, congratulations on your award, and I look forward to seeing your work in, in future shows. Well, thank you so much for having me. Well, hello, Helmut. Great to see your picture, and congratulations. First prize for your photography. Ready for the day. Tell us about it. Well, thank you very much. Uh, this was actually photographed two years ago, because last year, because of COVID, the, the train wasn't running. So I had some in the library, and I took the red car from the, was it coming out of the shop, and then actually I digital enhanced it. I removed some fencing here, added some bushes, and gave it an overall sort of uh, aged look. And lucky me, I got first place. <laughs> Very nicely done. It sure looks good. Okay. Thank you. Well, look who's back. Helmet, second place award two for photography for Cloverdale Station. Awesome! One and two, I mean, that was definitely a night which made my night. Uh, another image which I shot at the Cloverdale station, which is the train is ready to depart. And, and it's actually a beautiful little uh, enhancement in Zurich for people can go on rides uh, and takes you back in history. Now, I noticed that there is no glass on your photo. Yes, there was one of a couple things I did on both images. I prefer to print it on bamboo paper. And this way, especially in gallery exhibits, uh, eliminates the glare. It makes a big difference for photographing. And it sure... Um, sure does. It, it looks good when you're looking at the image as well. Yes. Thank you. Very nice. And again, congratulations on your double victory. And we all look forward to next year's. Yeah, for sure we do. Thank yeah. you. Well, Isabel, it's really nice to chat with you here. I am looking forward to hearing you tell us about your art piece, the Royal Rail Car. You won third place with that, and I want to congratulate you on that. So um, tell us a few of the things. Uh, that are important to you on this piece? Well, thank you, Wendy. I very much appreciate the prize. It was a surprise. This um, piece of art that I did is five years in the making, and it's a celebration of uh, the 20th anniversary of the railroad, and it was also done for the 150 Canada celebration. And I created this piece of art into three sections. The two rail cars and the images in the middle are to do with the historical aspect of this rail car. Oh, neat. Very interesting. So now, and one of the things we forgot to mention is that you are a station master. Would you like to just take a moment and, and tell us about that as well? Yes, I am station master of Fraser Valley Heritage Railway. I've been there for since the beginning. And being a female is what drove me to create this piece because uh, we needed a, a female touch to the station. <laughs> well, it looks like you've got a lovely touch there. Well, thank you very much, Isabel. And once again, I do want to congratulate you on your award and uh, thank you for chatting with me this evening. Well, thank you very much. It's been fun. Okay. So hi, Jenny. It's pretty exciting to uh, hear about your award for your photography. I know you had other pictures in the show, but your photography picture won you a prize. Congratulations. Thank you. And the picture is called Perfect Timing. Tell us about that, because I know as a photographer, timing is crucial. <laughs> so perfect timing came about um, by me taking pictures of the train when I was coming home from work after, after work on Saturday, September 11th. I spotted the train on the side of the road. I didn't think much about it at the time because I thought I was just going to paint the image. So I took a bunch of photos and then I kept gravitating towards this picture because I really liked how it had the rear view mirror and it had the train in the distance. And so I knew I wanted to like capture it regardless um, 
of, I'm gonna start over again, regardless of whether I had time to like paint it or not, I knew I wanted to submit it into the show. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to, instead of painting it, because I knew I didn't have enough time with the pregnancy and everything, I've been really tired, so I decided to like submit this photo. And I didn't realize until after I actually printed the artwork at the print shop that the heritage sign is in front of the train saying, tourist attraction, heritage church site this way. And then the interurban 1225 train is in the front. And I just thought, what are the chances of that? Like the whole timing of the situation. Like I've, for somebody who doesn't do photography generally, I just thought it's one of those magical moments in time where I could never probably get that shot again, right. going down highway 10. <laughs> so that's how this piece came about. And in the end, I'm really happy with it. I just really like the whole layout of it between the rear view mirror and the line in the road and the train in the distance. Oh yes, for sure. And and um, producing it in black and white just added that extra touch, didn't it? Yes. Yeah, very yeah, nice. Yeah, I like the look of black and white. It kind of gives it like a timeless feel. Yes, You don't does. know if it's kind of now or if it was in the past. Exactly. Well, congratulations once again, and we'll look forward Thank to you. seeing some more of your work in some of the shows. Thanks a lot. And of course, congratulations on what's you. coming for you soon. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay. I want to thank all the winners for sharing their ideas and their art with me today and again congratulate them on their awards. Just a special reminder to you that the show is here in the gallery until November 25th and it also can be seen online at the Arts Council of Syria.ca.